What's up guys, Evil D here. Today I want to speak to you about a new app I found just recently. I've seen the news of it floating around, but I actually thought it was something else. But I went and finally checked it out, and it's actually pretty freaking awesome. Now this is called Utalk, and Utalk is a language learning software slash package where you can basically download like a whole heap of different languages and it helps you learn words and certain phrases within those languages. It's kind of like an on the go phrase book type of thing. Like for instance, if you're traveling internationally, you can just quickly go in here and find out the thing you need, tap and learn. But they recently came out with Esperanto and I thought I've got to check this out because I love checking out all the newest Esperanto stuff. That's just me, who I am. Anyway, as you can see, I've downloaded it already. It's up in the top left hand corner. But before I jump into that, check out all the different crazy languages they've got. Well, they've got Romanian, they've got Scots, Cilici uh, Sicilian. Ugh. Sorry, I totally butchered that language. Um, what else have we got? Toki Pearson? Wow, okay. Wow, they've got so many. Zulu, man, I'm going to check that one out later. But before I go off topic, let's get into Esperanto. Now, what I like particularly about this particular language package is it doesn't teach you the language as in grammar and stuff like that. If you want to learn grammar, check out Learnu, check out Duolingo, work on those packages, they will help you with grammar. Learn more than Duolingo, Duolingo more with like certain phrases and putting those phrases together and stuff like that. But this here is great for learning words about certain everyday contexts which you just don't see in those other courses. Like, it is quite unique in what it does. I actually really enjoyed it. Now, if, as you can see straight away on the screen here, nothing fancy. Um, it's just basically different groupings, first words, adjectives, fruits, stuff like that. Those ones are quite standard, okay? You find that type of stuff in any course, but check this out. I'm gonna scroll across, and you've got things like, where was it before? Doctors, okay, so this is basically words about um, people uh, like different types of like doctors and Wow, well, that was probably the worst <laughs> explanation in the world. Okay, but different situations where you would be at a doctor You've got shopping which my missus should definitely check out technology. That one's a good one I'm gonna go into a few of these in a minute, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview You've got illness business business is something you don't see very often taught in Esperanto probably because uh, a lot of Esperanto they just don't do business in Esperanto, but it is a growing field. I've, I actually did um, translation work, kind of, like it wasn't paid or anything, but I did translation between a Chinese Esperanto and an English speaker, and I was kind of like the go-between translator, so that was pretty cool. I'll talk about that another time, but let's just keep going onwards here. Um, so you've got animals, and that's a massive section, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump straight into one of these, like for instance, let's just go into illness, because if you ever get sick while at an international meeting, you're going to want to know how to talk about your illness. So let's just jump in there. Now, as you see, you've got practice, easy game, speaking game, hard game, memory game, and recall. Now, obviously, you're going to want to start with practice. So you come in here, and as you can see right here, so it's got a picture. I was just waiting for it to talk then, because normally it does. You've got a picture, and then you've got these different words down the side. And this one says, Mi bezonas curatsiston. As you can see, the guy's basically dying on the floor from a heart attack. So he's just, what he's trying to say there is, I need a doctor. And if you tap on it, listen to this. Mi bezonas curatsiston. You've actually got an Esperanto speaker speaking the words to help you with your accent. Now, watch this. I hit it again. Mi bezonas curatsiston. So you've got a male and a female, so you can hear it both from a male, um, a male voice and both a female voice, which is pretty cool because there's something, like for instance with Duolingo, it's just all one voice, it's a male voice. And this one here isn't just one or two, I think there's actually several different voices. Mi bezonas curatsisto. No. Mi bezonas curatsisto. I remember hearing another voice in one of the words. Maybe that was just for particular words that have different um, recordings. But that's cool. I like the fact that you've got that. So as you can see, you've got down the side all the different types of things you would say if you were sick. Um, I have a cold, for instance. Mi havas malvarmumon. Mi havas malvarmumon. Um, mi havas malvarmumon. <laughs> Okay, so that was a massive fail on my part. Just ignore that. Don't don't copy my voice. Copy the voice from the app. Um, because I was just kind of swapping between the English and Esperanto then. But I've actually checked out a lot of the translations in here and it's really well done. Um, I actually read a little bit before and it was this was designed with the help of um, Educo.net, uh, which is a massive online, well, it's not just online, but it's a massive website, okay, um, that's designed to help teachers 
teach Esperanto. So you can be quite assured that everything in here is correct. I haven't seen any errors so far, so it's really good. Now, I like this type of thing here. I have a high temperature. We have a alta temperatura. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So, or um, for instance, I have a sore throat. We have a gordolorum. Me have us gorge dolorum. See, that's good because if I was on the fly talking, I might have to stop and think about it for a second. But if I just run through and practice all of these before, like maybe once every now and then, I'd be pretty set in most situations. I'm hoping I'd never have to use this one. Min malsanigis iu manjajo. So that says I have food poisoning, poisoning. But what they've actually translated here is it says, um, some food has made me sick. That's an interesting way of saying it. Um, I'd probably use another combination, but yeah, that works, you know what I mean? I have a toothache. Mi havas dento doloro. That's good. Mi havas dento doloro. I like that. I've been stung by a wasp, I've been bitten by a dog. If you're ever at an international Esperanto Congress and you get stung by a wasp and bitten by a dog, man, that sucks to be you, but you know, we'll get over that. I just want to hear this one. This puppy is me. <laughs> I love the pictures too. I saw one about blood earlier and there's like blood dripping from the hand. I'm like, dude, that is really brutal. But anyway, let's go back a bit. So you've got that. Then obviously you've got some games. Now I'm going to check out this easy game. Yeah, doctoras. Me have us gorge doloron. Me sent us min bon stata. Min malsanigis iu manjajo. We have a cigar, Ah, okay, so they show you the pictures with the words and then they say a word. So he's, he just said, Me have a cigar, So I have a throat, um, like a throat ache or whatever, or throat pain. So I just click on the right one. Me have a cigar, Booyah! Now, as you see, ooh, yeah, I got a green tick. And then it just keeps going through the different words. Let me just go back though, because we don't want to go for all the words. Um, then you've got uh, the speaking game, so let's just quickly check this one out. Yeah, you wash your hands, little girl. Ah, okay, so I think you've got to say it now, so let me check it out. Okay, I see what's happening here. So basically what it does is you record your voice and then you can kind of just compare it Which is pretty cool because that's uh, you know, sometimes you don't actually hear yourself That was actually a real issue for me when I was learning Esperanto. I started because I, I learned for the first like three months in solitude I actually practiced a lot of bad habits and it took me a while to get out of those later on I still got some of them now funnily enough. Let's go into hard game, shall we? Let's check out what this is Ah, oh, okay, so now you've got to grab the picture that's associated what with, with what you just heard into the square in the middle. So I've got this one. Yee, yee, yee. Let's just drop that in there. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so basically I feel, you know, good. So then, obviously this guy looks like he's a happy champ, so we just drop him in there. Yeah. Awesome! And I guess it's just going to keep doing the same thing. Now let's just quickly check out the memory game while we're at it. Ooh. Uh, okay, so it shows you two pictures. Me falis. Ah, now you hear the words and you gotta remember where those pictures were. I think it was this one. Me falis. Champ! I'm a total champ! Okay, next one. What do we got? Recall. I need a doctor. Ah! Me bazonas kuratsiston. Me bazonas kuratsiston. Me bazonas kuratsiston. Ah, so what you actually do there, as you can see, is it records you, then you compare it to their inbuilt recording, which is pretty cool. I love the interactiveness of this one with your actual voice, something that no other Esperanto course has actually done, so that is freaking awesome. So yeah, as you can see, there was so many categories, sports, business, um, I'll definitely be checking out the business one later after I've finished recording this. You've got family, which you'll find in most courses. Um, yeah, most of them. What's in this Esperanto one? I've got to check this out because that seems pretty particular to Esperanto, obviously. Oh, okay, so it's just going through your... Academia de Esperanto. Actually, this could be pretty good because if you're new to Esperanto, 
I see what they've done here is they've listed a lot of words of important either historical things or current things within the Esperanto community. So you can basically just use this as a go-to list. Just check this out. So for instance, Castello Grazi, uh, Graziliano. <laughs> Castello Graziliano. Yeah, sorry, that's not a word I say very often, but I know of that place. That's in France and it's a castle owned by Esperantists. Um, I believe it's the um, the French uh, youth group that owned it. I don't know. I almost went there once, but I, I had to go do something else. It was one of those things I definitely want to check out. But yeah, if you're an Esperantist and you go to France, you can stay in a freaking castle. How cool is that? But yeah, highly recommend you do that one day. So let's just have a quick look what else they got in here. Esperanto Mono. Ah, Esperanto Mono. See, that's a historical thing because at one stage there was almost an actual Esperanto money system that was launched. So this is pretty cool. You can learn some words and also learn a little bit of history. Now, this is um, obviously paid software. Uh, Utalk, uh, they sell all their software. I believe it's like $13 um, US. I'll actually put a link to uh, this app down in the description. Obviously, you'll need like an iPad or an iPhone or something like that to use it. Um, but I definitely recommend you check it out. If you're serious about learning Esperanto, obviously you'll want to use this in conjunction with all the other big courses that have come out recently. Actually, there's been a lot of courses that come out recently, and each one of them seems to just bring something completely new to the table. Now, this one, as I said, is really good with the whole microphone um, integration with your voice and, you know, being able to check your own voice, and also the specialized words within certain categories which is something a lot of the other courses don't focus on. They're very broad. This one isn't about teaching grammar. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to learn the actual language through this course. This is just for learning words and certain little phrases. Um, it's like a guidebook to Esperanto. So highly recommend you check it out. Now, if you've liked this video, give it a like, share it around with your friends, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not there, I'll find you. And I'll hit you with my iPad. <laughs>